Hello everybody and welcome to our home here in Brittany in northwest France and our channel Frugal Queen in France where we share all of our money saving and frugal living with you. I'm Jane, my husband Mike's behind the camera, British, early retirees, debt and mortgage free and living a frugal life here in France. And every Wednesday we invite you to the sofa for a mid-week money chat. So let's take a look at what we're gonna talk about this week. If you've been here before, you know I like to start by being reflective. Now the title says 10 ways to prevent non-essential spending. But that doesn't mean to say that all spending, all the time, every time, has to be only essential. Life isn't like that. Of course some spending is going to be non-essential. But today's talk that I'm sharing with you is about how we keep that in perspective how we keep that under control, how we do that frugally, and how we do that mindfully. <laughs> Let's begin with knowing the difference between essential spending a non-essential spending because every aspect of our life will have an element of both of that when you go to the supermarket for example there will be the essential food the food that's good for you the food that's nutritious the food that's for breakfast lunch or dinner and then there's the non-essential food isn't there the bits that you add in on top of it the ice cream, the desserts, the snacks, the crisps, the chocolate, all of those that go in on top, those are non-essential. So even at the supermarket, there's an essential and non-essential. Cleaning products can be broken down into essential and non-essential. Same with toiletries. So whatever you're gonna buy, take that with you in your thought process when you're writing out your shopping lists. What is essential and non-essential? Here's an example in all aspects of food. There is essential food, the meals that you cook at home or prepare to take with you. And the non-essential food would be the stuff that you didn't think of and you didn't plan. For example, essential, essentially, you need fluids. You would take a bottle of water with you that you filled up from the tap at home or the filter at home. Coffee would be you've got a flask, you filled it up from home to take it with you. So whatever you buy, start breaking that down into what actually is essential and non-essential for you. Number two is all about planning. It doesn't matter what you buy or where you're going to go, or whatever form of shopping it is, you need to have applied some thought to it and plans to it before you're going to do it. So before you go, you'll know what your budget is going to be of what you're going to spend there. You know what you're going to spend. Here is an example, and we discuss this all the time on this channel. Before you write your shopping list, you really need to know what is in your freezer? What is in your fridge? What is in your pantry? What toiletries do you already have? What cleaning products do you already have? It is the same with household items, anything you want for the garden, or anything you want to buy clothings-wise. How many times would you go shopping and think to yourself, that's a great deal on a pair of jeans. That's a great deal on a new top and bring it home and put it with the 14 pairs of jeans you've already got or the 26 tops you've already got in your cupboard. So before you go shopping, before you plan anything, you write a list, there is that plan of checking what you already have so you're going to go shopping with your plan. Number 
three is about tracking your spending. If you run a budget and you've planned in advance how much you're going to spend on everything, from whether it's car fuel, to food, to clothing, to kids' pocket money, everything, it's got a line on your budget. To go alongside of that, you may have a line on your budget that says discretionary spending. That's yours that you're going to spend on anything from a coffee to a meal out to things that you just want to buy. But you still need to track those and record those receipts. And you will then see in that a pattern of spending. Here's an example. In this month of March, I have tracked already to this date that we have spent 45 euros this month in a variety of charity shops on things either for craft or for our home. If I did that every single month, that would be ridiculously unsustainable. To spend that over a year, 540 euros a year on stuff from a charity shop isn't sensible. It's just dribbling money out. To, to use the phrase from money mum and that kind of spending, it is that death by a thousand cuts, isn't it? It's a bit of money here and a bit of money there. By tracking that, by putting that, however you record it, in your app, on your spreadsheet, or like we do, written down in hard copy on our budget book, you can see, we can see, I can see clearly that spending habit. It really does show to you where your money's going. And you can do like I've done this, going, go, well, hang on a minute. I need between now and some sensible time in the future to stop this. This isn't sustainable spending. This is non-essential spending. I can't carry on like this. And it really does make you reflect upon your own behavior and, and keep yourself and your spending on non-essential items in check. point is about all of us, you, me, everyone, rethinking your purchasing around sales. But let me explain this. Every single season there is a sales after it. Christmas after Christmas. Uh, let's run through them, shall we, as quickly as we possibly can. Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, St Patrick's Day, lead up to the Easter and after Easter, all of these things. In the UK, all those bank holidays, the Whitson break, and then the summer break, and then the return to school, and those sales after that, and then Halloween and the sales after that. Huge amount of these seasonal periods, if you actually evaluate what they're selling you, it's a pile of cheap, tacky junk. And we don't want to go out afterwards because this cheap, cheap, tacky junk is cheap and buy a load of stuff that you didn't need, that you don't want. You've already got 14 rolls of wrapping paper in the cupboard. You don't need more of it. You don't need every single season to go out and buy more sweets and chocolates and candies and keep buying them, buying them and buying them. You don't need any more buckets and spades and beach balls and plastic sunglasses from the supermarket and two for one offers on beach mats in the summer. You don't, you've still got them from last year when you went whizzing out the sales and bought them then. You've still got the Halloween decorations and the Easter stuff from last year. You don't need to keep buying this. And you just think to yourself, well, it's a real bargain. It doesn't matter if they're selling it to you for 10p, 10 cents, any of that stuff. You're cluttering up your house with this cheap, tacky junk that you often just don't need. I'm going to put in a little caveat here. If after Thanksgiving or Christmas, you are a family who likes to eat a roast turkey every single week, you eat it all up, you use it all up afterwards, that represents good value to you. But we're not seeing these kind of food sales at the moment, unfortunately. I'm talking about the stuff that you can eat that is the non-essential food, the cookies and the junk and the sweeties and the marshmallows and all of that stuff that's non-essential food. 
but you might want to buy just a little bit of it but if you're just buying loads of it because it's on sale it's not representing any good value to you or anyone else at all and it is really non-essential spending if that's you and it used to be me in the past you might need to check yourself My fifth point is a question. Does shopping of any sort fill some kind of hole? Do you shop because you're bored? Do you shop because you're sad? Do you shop because you're unhappy or lonely? Do you shop for any reason to fill some kind of a hole? If that's the case and you're aware of that, you need something a lot more nourishing to fill that hole than shopping. Find something that does that, whether it's volunteering, sitting with friends and having a cup of tea and a chat, whether it's playing games, card games with your friends or with your kids or your family, whether it's walking, exercising, reading, catching up on those films that you've got lying around, that craft you've already got, those DIY jobs that you've already bought the stuff for, but find something else to fill that hole. Because if it's costing you money and you're just going out there buying non-essential stuff, it isn't actually making you any happier and it is certainly just draining your wallet. <laughs> two parts which are linked but I'm going to separate them for the sake of making it easier are the questions that you are going to ask and I ask that we ask before we buy anything in particular the non-essential items and like I said at the beginning I'm not saying that we don't buy non-essential items and I'm not suggesting to anyone that nobody buys non-essential items there are plenty of things that we have in our house that are not essential, that bring us joy and bring us great pleasure. But the questions we need to ask, the first one is, do I have one of these already? Do I have several of these already? Am I actually going to use it? Am I actually going to put that picture on the wall? And where am I going to put it? Am I actually going to use this fabric? Am I actually going to put these curtains up if I actually buy them? So before you buy anything for your home, for example, think to yourself, where is it going to go? What am I going to use it for? Am I going to still like it next month? Because we've often seen things, haven't we, that we think, oh, that's lovely. Oh, that's pretty. But will you think that next month? And the way to work that one out of will I still like that next month is don't buy it until next month. Delay your purchases on that. And it gives you that time to keep asking those questions of, am I gonna like this in the future? Am I gonna wear this, use this in the future? Let's go on to number seven. Now, number seven is about all the decisions that we make before we go out and buy clothing. Now, in the main, a waterproof jacket is a waterproof jacket, isn't it? A pair of jeans is a pair of jeans. Walking boots, walking boots. Work suits, a work suit. Casual clothes, a casual clothes. We know what we like and we know what's essential to us. Maybe the job you do has an essential array of clothing, but we don't need to keep perpetually buying new stuff all the time that goes into the realms of non-essential. Now, I'm female, I've been a young female, I've been susceptible to fashion. Certainly not like that anymore. I know what I like. You may be the same as well. It's not to say that we don't buy new clothing, that we don't see new clothing, that we don't buy the occasional item. Look at my scarves, for example, of non-essential. But we can. If we're not too careful, have lots and lots of non-essential items. So, 
Same with food, the essential food, the non-essential food is exactly the same with clothing, doesn't it? Now, Mike and I have a clothing budget and we know that we've got that money in there to spend, but we make sure we buy our essential clothing first and then if we want to, we've got our non-essentials after that. But don't succumb to it because it's so easy, isn't it, to just keep buying new clothes because we keep seeing something nice all the time. And you could end up like me with probably six sets of long sleeve stripy t-shirts, but hey, I'm not perfect. My next point, and you could try this if you want, is where you make not buying non-essential items your personal challenge. Let me explain to you. I've shared with you previously that Mike and I have a week each month, the last seven days of every month in which we buy nothing at all. No fuel for the car, no food, nothing at all within that week. We do it for our budget, we can wrap up the month. We also have three months a year where we only buy absolute bare bones essentials. We buy food, we put fuel in the car, we pay the bills, but we don't buy anything else whatsoever. And it means any little bits of extra money that we might have for non-essential spending, we call that discretionary spending, for those three months, all go into our long-term savings. Your non-spending months, non-spending weeks, can be your own, to set your own challenges. It might be you have days a week, week a month, or a month a year. But they're your challenges and they can really help you to reevaluate your spending habits and help you towards that cutting back and preventing non-essential spending. Essential items and non-essential spending is something that we think of in shops and places that you go to but more and more and more the case now it is online a huge amount of our purchases take place online and those retailers are really smart aren't they they keep your details then things pop up everything that you see online pops up in your social media feed as well and it just slips itself into your brain doesn't it and it just comes up all the time and it shows you it knows what you like and it does that to you and if you are one of those people who think to yourself i am spending too much money because earlier i've said to you keep a receipt of everything you've spent and if you go through your bank statements and it keeps coming up, Amazon, 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 you know where your money's going, don't you? Delete that app. Please delete that app. If you know it's something that you really haven't got under control, it might not be something you can control and you do need to delete it. Are you getting emails about offers? Unsubscribe. Delete your cookies as well. It pops up as well. It does in the EU, it makes you click. Can they track you? Say no. No, they cannot track me. No, they cannot. Do that all the time. But in other countries, you have to go in to your settings and delete that. But stop it. Stop it from popping up all the time if you think I'm spending too much money here because it's not just physically going into shops, it's online as well. If you need to, delete those apps. My final point is all about beating the retailers at their own game. Because what they do is this, they present to you offers that they are saving you money what they're actually doing is trying to get as much money of you, out of you as possible. And I'm going to explain to you what it's like shopping in a French supermarket. As you go through the door of a French supermarket, you are literally kettled, funneled through offers. On one side, as you go through the supermarket, 
all the pretty beautiful French clothes, all the items for your home, for your garden, seasonal stuff, toys, garden stuff. And on the right is this barrage of two for one, three for one offers. And you have to go through all that before you can even get to the most basic of items from toilet tissue to bread. You have to go through it. And it's almost like taking a deep breath and running through the fire hoops or walking over the hot coals. You've got to get past all that to get what you want. And online is like that as well. First thing that pops up, the new stuff, the sales stuff, the offers. You've got to think to yourself, no, I've logged on to this clothing company because I want new underwear, socks, and some night clothes. You've got to go specifically there, buy it, get out. Because what they do, and I'm using this word very seriously here, is absolutely invidious. It's a disgrace. They know what they're doing. They are employing really, really well-researched, very, very clever psychological techniques on you to part with your money. And you need to be aware of that before you go into any shops. Mike would have to bleep out what I have to think about the retailers and what they do here, because they know what they are doing. They don't care that you're on a limited income. They don't care that your electricity bills have gone up. They don't care that fuel prices for your car have gone up or that inflation is sky high. They want to get your money off you. You need to beat them at their own game. Wherever you go, whatever you buy online, in a store, you need to remember that. Before you go in, get that list out. Remind yourself, this and only this is my essential items and things I've come in for. Get in, walk over that hot coals and through that hoop of fire to get what you want and walk out of that shop with what you went in for and your budget intact. go 10 ways to prevent non-essential spending we love all of your comments and we read every single one of them we love the way that you share with us so share with us how do you prevent non-essential spending how do you make sure that you really stick to that budget that shopping list we hope that you've enjoyed our video today. If you have, go on please, we ask you just hit that like button. If you're not a subscriber, what's stopping you? Costs you nothing. Hit the subscribe and the little bell and you won't miss any of our videos. Just leaves me to say on behalf of Mike and I, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you again soon. Goodbye for now.